Welcome to Maths with Bob. Today we're looking at uh, using integration to find area under curves and uh, this is the first case where it's a fairly simple area. This one is we're going to look about the x-axis to start with and the y-axis. Okay, we've got a curve y equals x squared plus 1 and let's suppose we want to find the um, area between the x values of say 2 and 3. So let's actually just put down here 2 and 3. Okay, so we want to find the area bounded by that curve y equals x squared plus 1 and the x values of 2 and 3. Now, if x was 2, the actual y value at that point would be you know, at that, uh, 5. 2, 2 is a 4 and 1 5, so that would be 5 here and uh, 3 squared is 9, 1 is 10 there. Okay. We're not going to use those values, but we will when we rotate it about the, well, not rotate it, but find the area about the, uh, the y axis. Okay. Uh, now, so how do we set this up? Well, we know that the area a is equal to the integral from the lower value to the upper value, lower bound to the upper value of the actual function as a function x. So it's actually in this case, it's uh, I just write it as fx uh, dx. Okay. Okay, we can uh, approximate this with trapezoid rules and Simpson's rules, uh, but basically from the Riemann sums, we know we sum the areas and we shrink the rectangles um, and we find. The exact area is the integral from 2 to 3 of fx dx. So we just substitute this in. We go, OK, uh, 2 to 3 of fx. So now x is actually x squared plus 1 dx. OK, now we have to integrate all this. And you can see here, this would be equal to what? Uh, x cubed on 3, integral of x squared. Remember, add 1 to the power, put over the new power. Uh, then we need to also integrate the 1, so that will bring back the x. And then we need to feed it the values 3 and 2. Uh, okay, so first of all, we feed it the value 3, and uh, we end up getting 3 cubed as 27 on 3, which would be 9, plus another 3. So after we fed it the uh, um, 3, we get 9 and 3, so we get 12. Now we have to subtract off the value we put in the 2. Now we've got 2, so 2 cubes 8. Uh, 8 on 3 is uh, 2 and 2 thirds plus another 2. So we get 4 and 2 thirds. Okay. So I'm just doing all this together. And eventually we end up getting, okay, the answer should be what? About 7 and a third square units. So this area should eventually work out to be 7 and 1 third units squared. Okay. So that would be the area. Now that's the area bounded by x is equal to 2 and 3, uh, the x-axis, obviously, and the curve. Okay, so now let's have a look around the y-axis. Okay, here we have the uh, same graph. Uh, remember, let's put the points in. Uh, I think we had uh, 2 and 3. And remember, we had to work out the y-values were, I think, 5 and 10. Now, we want to find this uh, particular uh, okay, area now. Okay, so okay, so we now want to find the area about the y-axis. Okay, so let's have a look. It's going to be obviously the integral. Now we're going up the y-axis from five to ten, and we'd have to have an f of y dy. Okay, now the first problem here is obviously y is equal to x squared plus one, and we need to rearrange that. Okay, so first of all we would uh, rearrange the function. So if y is equal to x squared plus 1, then we try and make x the subject. Okay, y minus 1 is equal to x squared, and we take the square root of both sides. We're assuming it's positive here, so we're going to say, therefore, x would equal the square root of y minus 1. Okay, all right, so we now uh, substitute this back into our formula, so we know that, well, okay, this equals the integral from now. I'm going to rewrite that as an index form. So I'm going to write that as y minus 1 to the power a half dy. The bounds are still the same, 5 and 10. OK, now I have to integrate y minus 1 to the power a half. OK, so let's actually uh, do that. OK, so that becomes y uh, minus 1 to the half plus 1. So it becomes y minus 1 to the power 3 on 2. Now it's all going to be all over, okay, it will be all over 3 on 2, okay. But I normally would write that, because I'm dividing by 
uh, 3 over 2, I'll multiply by 2 thirds. So I'm actually going to rewrite that as 2 thirds of this expression. Um, and I'm also going to take the 2 thirds out. So this will be evaluated between, uh, you can see here, 10 and 5. Now what I'm going to do uh, is, um, first up, uh, let's 60. Move this a little bit over. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're now going to uh, substitute, well, the 10 and the 5 in. But first up, let's actually just take the 2 thirds. This, I find, when I take this out, which becomes y minus 1 now to the 3 on 2, okay, which is equal to uh, 2 thirds of, uh, what's the values? Put in 5 for the y and the 10, so let's just, just, just do the 10 and the 5, I forgot those off the bounds there, but if we put the 10 in first, uh, we should put the top one in first, so 10 minus 1 is 9, so it's going to be 9 to the 3 and 2, minus, let's put the bottom one in, 5, so that makes it 4 to the 3 and 2. Okay, so we can work these out, uh, 9 to the 3 on 2 is the square root of 9, which is 3 cubed, so it's 27. Uh, now, 4 to the 3 on 2 is the square root of 4, which is 2, 2 cubes 8, so it's 27 minus uh, 8. Uh, okay, so it's 19, so it's actually just 2 thirds of 19. Okay, and 2 thirds of 19, uh, 2 thirds of 19 is actually uh, 12 and 2 thirds. Okay, so the answer is actually 12 and two-thirds, and this becomes units squared. So this would be our area about the y-axis. Okay, well, thank you for watching. We'll now uh, move on to volumes. We'll start rotating these around the x and y-axis and uh, finding volumes as solid as a revolution shortly. Okay, thank you.